Okay, so how well do you actually understand basic math? Well, if you have pretty strong basic math skills, you should be able to easily solve this problem without using a calculator. All right, so let's take a look at the problem. We have a fraction here, and the numerator, or the top part of the fraction, is 18 divided by 1 half times 4, all of this divided by 3. Okay, so we do have a multiple choice question, and let's take a look at our uh, possible answers. So A is 18, B is 3, C is 12, and D is 48. Now, the only rule here is no calculators, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here again is the problem. And uh, there is no time limit, and I would definitely encourage you to take out a piece of paper and a pencil and write out each step. So try not to do this in your brain, but let's take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is D, which is 48. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence for being a certified professional expert in basic mathematics, which uh, would include skills like dealing with fractions, basic multiplication, and most importantly, something called the order of operations. So congratulations, but uh, if you made an error, don't uh, feel bad. Probably a lot of you did. And let's take a look at this problem and see how someone could get the wrong answer. All right, so we know that the correct answer is D, 48, but let's kind of do this problem in a different way and obviously make some mistakes here. So what if someone said, well, I think I'm going to start right here, 18 divided by 1 half, and maybe in their mind's eye, this fraction 1 half, they just looked at this 2, and they did like 18 divided by 2, so that would be 9. So that definitely can happen. So now you have 9 times 4 over 3, and then someone might say, well, uh, I have a 9 up here. I can take this 3 and divide it into that 9, so now I have 3 times 4, which, of course, would be 12. So if you answer 12, well, that is one way you could get that wrong answer. But someone else could have uh, maybe started the problem this way and said, well, 1 half times 4. So 1 half times 4 is what? Well, 1 half of 4 is 2. Now I have 18 divided by 2, and that's 9. So now I have a 9 uh, uh, up in the numerator, and I have a 3 down in the denominator. So I have 9 over 3. And the, uh, 9 divided by 3 is 3, so 3 looks pretty good as well. So, of course, there's different um, answers depending upon the order you do this problem. And I think that's probably uh, where most people got this wrong. It's not that they don't understand basic uh, math operations. Well, the fraction part right here might uh, give some people some problems. But typically, people uh, make a mistake here. And these simple math problems because they're not quite sure about the order to do the problem. So we need to review something called the order of operations. And that means we need to review this lovely acronym right here. Okay, so this is called PEMDAS. Pretty much everyone that's ever studied mathematics has learned something like this. Now, PEMDAS is a checklist. It goes from left to right, and it tells us the uh, correct order to do a math problem in terms of the operations. So in math, a mathematical operator is something like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So when we have these various operations, we need to know the correct order to do, uh, basically do a math problem. Because as you can tell, we will come up with different values depending on the order uh, that we uh, approach the problem. Okay, so before I tell you what these letters stand for, let me give you a, a little phrase so you can remember PEMDAS. That is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. One more time, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So I'm not sure what Aunt Sally did, but we thank her for her cool little phrase. All right, so let me go ahead and explain PEMDAS. Okay, so as I said, this is a checklist, 
and not everything uh, in this checklist will be in a math prompt. So just basically go through this checklist from left to right and whatever uh, you may have in terms of one of these steps, then take that step. Okay, so the first thing is P. P stands for parentheses. So if you have any parentheses in your math problem, that's where you need to start. But it's not just these type of parentheses. You could also have these type of things like brackets or squiggly brackets. And sometimes uh, in a math problem, you'll have multiple parentheses. So for example, you can have like a bracket and then have some math in here, then you have some parentheses and then another bracket. So the way uh, P works is go to the innermost parentheses first or innermost grouping symbols and then work yourself um, out from there. Okay, so in our problem, we don't have any parentheses, but if you did, this is where you would start. But uh, I'll get back to the actual problem in just one second. Matter of fact, let me just tell you right now, here we have a fraction. So uh, fractions, the way you want to treat fraction problems, uh, generally speaking, is think of the numerator as its own separate math problem. Okay, so if there's math to do up here, go ahead and do all this math. Same thing with, uh, with the denominator. Do all the math down in the denominator. And then once you're done with everything in the numerator and everything in the denominator, then simplify the problem. Okay, so let's go back to our checklist. So the next thing is E. And E stands for powers, but really that E doesn't uh, stand for the word powers. What it is, is exponents. So if you have something like two to the third power, this little three right here is what we call an exponent in mathematics. The two is a base, the entire thing is a power. So if you have any powers in your problem, then that's what you're gonna do next. Now the next thing is probably one of the most confused parts of the order of operations. And a lot of, a lot of people probably made this mistake in this particular problem. But uh, before we tell you uh, what that mistake is, let me go ahead and tell you what these letters stand for. So M, D, A, and S. M stands for multiplication, D stands for division, A stands for addition, and S stands for subtraction. So some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. Do 2 Math Man, I know exactly, that's a terrible little happy face, there you go, that's a little better, uh, what you're going to do next, you're going to do the multiplication because it's the next thing on our checklist uh, from left to right. And that makes sense. Unfortunately, that's not the way this PEMDAS checklist, checklist works. And this is where a lot of people get frustrated with math. They're like, hey, you told me one thing, now you're telling me something else. Well, uh, the order of operations or this PEMDAS business is a very confused thing because I think a lot of math books don't stress this well enough. So if you made a mistake, don't feel too bad. So the way this actually works is the following. We're going to do multiplication or division, whatever we see first from left to right. So if we have multiplication, then division in our problem, well, we're gonna do the multiplication uh, first because that's what we have from left to right. But if we have division, then multiplication, we're going to do the division first because that's what we see first from left to right. And addition and subtraction work the same way. Okay, so now that we understand PEMDAS and the order of operations, basically all we need to do is some basic mathematics. Okay, so here is our problem. And let's go ahead and think about what we need to do. So first things first, do we have any parentheses? No, we do not. But we do have a fraction, so again, what you want to do is think of the numerator as its own separate problem, and then uh, down in the denominator as its own separate problem. But of course, we only have three down there. So really what we need to do is get the numerator simplified down to one value. All right, so uh, there are no parentheses, but are there any powers, any uh, powers and exponents? No, I do not see any, so we're good with that. So is there any multiplication and division? Yes, uh, there is, right? So we have uh, division right here. Okay, so that's our D. And we have multiplication right here. So what do we see first from, uh, from left to right? Well, we see division, right? So we have to do this first. Okay, so 18 divided by 1 half. Obviously, we need to know a thing or two about fractions. So let's go ahead and get into the math right now. Okay, so 18 divided by 1 half. How do we divide a uh, two fractions? Now, you might be saying, hey, Mr. You 2 Math Man, I don't see uh, two fractions. Well, you can make any number into a fraction by just simply putting it over 1. So now I can think of 18 as a fraction, 18 over 1 divided by 1 half. So the way we uh, divide fractions is to turn a division problem 
into a multiplication problem. So all we have to do is uh, go from the division to multiplication, uh, the division operator to the multiplication operator. And the way we're going to do that is to flip the fraction to the right of the division symbol. Okay, that's called the reciprocal. That's a fancy uh, word. So if we have one half, okay, so we have divided by one half, we're going to take this thing and flip it upside down. So that's going to be two over one or two. Let me give you another example. If I had three fourths and I wanted to uh, divide a fraction by three fourths, we'd end up multiplying by what? Four over three. So we have to flip the fraction to the right. And so now we have two over one, which of course is just two. So now we just have to figure out what 18 times two is. Of course, that is 36. Okay, so this entire thing right here is 36. So what you want to do in a math problem is simply just take one step at a time and then write that result and then uh, go from there. All right, so here is our problem. We uh, study the problem. We're like, all right, we got a fraction. Uh, here's the numerator. There's nothing to do in the denominator. So what do I have going on in the numerator? I have division, multiplication. So I've got to do what I see first from left to right. So 18 divided by 1 half is 36. Okay, so now the problem is 36 times 4 over 3. So we're clearly going to have to finish up our work in the numerator, right? So thir 36 times 4, I'm sorry, I think I said 36 times 3. I apologize. But anyways, we have 36 times 4 is what? That's 144. So 144 divided by 3 is 48. Now, if you're pretty uh, sharp with fractions, you could have noticed that you could take this 3 and divide that into 36, which would be 12 times 4. Now, why can we do that? Because we could factor or think of 36 as what? As 3 times 12, right? So 3 times 12 is 36. So we're looking at the problem 3 times 12 times 4 over 3. So all this here is multiplication, and you could, and you could cross cancel like factors in a fraction, right? So this this three here cross cancels with this three. So you end up with uh, 12 times four, which of course is 48. So either way is fine, whether you took this 36 and multiplied by four and got 144 and then divided it by three, or if you took that three divided into 36, had 12 and multiplied by four, the correct answer is 48. All right, so hopefully if you made an error with this problem, now you understand what to do the next time you encounter a basic math problem. But before we leave this video, um, I hope that you will consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It is my goal to try to teach math as clear and understandable as possible. And uh, as a math teacher, I am happiest when I have the largest classroom. Now, of course, on YouTube, I can grow my classroom as big as possible, but I can't do it without your support. So please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.